Half CNN by um, Omin Hawan. Thank you. Uh, I think this is fine. Okay, so um, we all know that um, short-term memory is a very basic and important cognitive function for um, both humans and other an animals. Um, despite its um, fundamental importance, how it's implemented in the brain, um, I think, remains lar largely an open problem. Um, the classical and perhaps the most natural view of how uh, short-term memory might be implemented in neural circuits relies on uh, the idea of an attractor. Um, so in this view, um, a memory, memory is maintained uh, through persistent activity of uh, individual neurons. Um, however, it's been recently pointed out that um, persistent activity of individual neurons is actually not necessary for short-term memory. Uh, memory can also be maintained through dynamic activity patterns where uh, individual neurons are active only uh, transiently. Um, and experimental evidence for both, uh, uh, these, both of these models has been reported previously. Um, so here um, I show you an example. I won't have uh, I won't go into the details of these studies, but um, so these are results from two experiments that um, recorded the activity of neurons in posterior parietal cortex of mice while the animals were doing a, a task um, that required visual short-term memory. Um, so on the left, um, you can see that um, many of the recorded neurons are active during a significant fraction of the trial, whereas on the right, um, the, the activity um, uh, the activity has a, a, a clear uh, sequential structure where each neuron um, um, is active only for a short period during the trial. Um, now, there were many differences between these two studies that could potentially um, explain the different activity patterns. Um, so for example, on the left, the animal was static, so it didn't receive any motion-related cues, um, whereas on the right, um, the animal was do doing a navigation task. It was navigating through a linear track, so it received some motion-related uh, cues. Um, on the left, the delay duration was variable. On the right, it was um, roughly constant. Um, and there were other dif differences as well. Um, and each of these dif uh, factors or a combination of um, them could potentially explain the observed difference in the activity patterns. Um, but it's hard to know exactly which of these factors um, are relevant. So um, the question we would like to address is what factors um, determine whether the activity pattern will be uh, persistent or sequential. So um, one way to address this question would be to raise an army of rodents um, and run lots and lots of experiments, systematically varying every um, experimental variable or uh, neural circuit property that uh, we think might be important. Um, but um, we didn't have an army of rodents. Uh, instead, we did have an army of CPUs at our disposal. So we addressed this question um, by running these um, experiments uh, in silico instead. Um, so uh, more specifically, we trained um, recurrent neural networks to determine the effects of um, task, um, other experimental factors such as delay duration variability or whether the task was a nav navigation task or not, um, intrinsic network properties, synaptic uh, plasticity, and so on, on, on the um, se sequentiality of the emergent solutions. Um, so um, first, I want to uh, talk about the tasks that we considered. Um, we have um, trained our networks on four main tasks that rely on short-term memory. Um, and uh, all our tasks shared a common trial structure, which is shown here. Um, so each trial starts with a, a stimulus period, and there's a delay, um, and then there's a, a response period. Um, and um, in some tasks, um, another stimulus or cue might appear during the, this la last period. Um, and in that case, the target response depends on the second stimulus or cue. Um, so I want to go uh, quickly go through our tasks now. Um, in the delayed estimation task, um, one or more stimuli are presented during the stimulus period, and then the task is just to report the stimulus or the stimuli after the delay. Um, in, in the change detection task, um, a second stimulus is presented after the delay, and the task is to um, judge whether the sec the, that stimulus is the same as the first one. Um, in the gated delayed estimation task, two stimuli are presented simultaneously, um, and after the delay, a, a cue um, indicates which one should be reported. Um, finally, in the simple 2FC task, um, the stimulus belongs to one of two categories, and the task is to judge which ca category um, it belongs to. Um, Next, I want to describe the neural networks we use for addressing our question. Um, so in our networks, sensory information is provided through a noisy po poisson populations that consist of stimulus-selective neurons. And um, we assume that inputs are independent both across neurons and across time. Um, these inputs then project onto the recurrent units, which are rectified linear units. 
um, and the recurrent units in turn project um, to the output unit or output units. Um, to address our question, we also need to be able to quantify what exactly we mean by sequentiality. Um, so there are basically two properties that we're looking for to consider an, an activity pattern sequential. So first, um, the activity of each neuron should be temporally localized, and uh, we quantify this as um, the ridge to background ratio. So this is just the um, mean activity of a neuron um, inside a small window around its peak time, uh, divided by, the, by its mean activity um, during the rest of the trial, and then we average this across all neurons. Um, secondly, we, uh, different neurons should be active at different points during the trial, uh, such that um, their peak response times should tile the duration of the trial roughly uniformly, and we quantify this by um, the entropy of the peak time distribution of the neurons. And since ideally we want both of these properties to be satisfied for a sequential activity pattern, our measure is um, just, our measure of sequentiality is just the product of these two terms. Okay, so, um, so neural networks are extremely degenerate models, um, which means that for any given task, they um, generally have very large uh, solution spaces, and the um, nature of the solution reached by the network might depend on how it's uh, initialized. And uh, we were worried about this because um, it raises the possibility that whatever result we may get could just be a consequence of the particular initialization we uh, happen to choose. And um, so initial exploration with the network suggested that the um, Initial recurrent connectivity matrix is the most important factor affecting the network's behavior. So we um, parameterize the initial recurrent connectivity matrix by two hyperparameters, lambda and sigma. Um, lambda controls the um, controls the um, uh, initial intrinsic time scale of the um, units, individual units, and sigma controls the uh, strength of the initial coupling between. Um, between the recurrent units. Um, so mathematically, um, we express the initial recurrent connectivity matrix as uh, lambda times the identity plus sigma times some random uh, off-diagonal matrix R. Okay, uh, and to avoid any sensitive dependence of our results on initialization, we repeated all our experiments on a 10 by 10 grid over this two dimensional hyperparameter space. And this gives rise to a diverse set of dynamics in the initial network ranging um, all the way from uh, quickly decaying dynamics to unstable dynamics to anything in between. Um, okay, now the results. Um, first, let's look at the effect of the hyperparameters lambda and sigma on the sequentiality of the solutions. So we find a significant increase in se uh, sequentiality with sigma, um, the initial network coupling, but um, no effect of uh, lambda um, on the sequentiality. Um, we think that this is because um, strong, stronger random coupling um, between the units introduces um, these higher frequency os oscillatory dynamics in the network, which turns out to be beneficial for the generation of sequences. Um, secondly, we um, look at the effect of um, task. Uh, we find a significant variation among tasks in their sequentiality index. So some of, uh, some of the tasks like um, change detection uh, lead to um, highly sequential solutions, whereas others, like the uh, the simple 2FC task, um, leads to uh, le lead to less sequential solutions. Uh, so, and here are uh, example tries from um, each of these um, experiments using the, the exact same initial condition. So, in the change detection task, uh, there's a clear sequential structure, um, whereas on the um, 2FC task, um, most of the neurons tend to ramp up toward the end of the trial, um, which leads to much less sequential responses. Uh, okay, so the question is why is there such a difference between the tasks? Um, to understand this, let's look at the schematic diagram of our tasks. Uh, so we noticed that um, uh, t tasks with higher sequentiality have a more complex um, temporal dependency. So, um, for example, in uh, cha both change detection and uh, gated delay estimation tasks, the network receives an input after the delay period. Um, and um, the target response depends on this input. Whereas in the um, other tasks, the network doesn't receive any input um, after the delay, and um, its res ta target response doesn't depend on what happens uh, in this period. Uh, so we say that these tasks have lower temporal um, complexity. So we hypothesize or conjecture that the temporal complexity of the task increases the sequentiality of the solutions. Uh, the reason intuitively is um, pretty clear. T tasks with higher temporal complexity require a um, higher frequency temporal basis, and sequential activity in the recurrent population essentially provides such a basis. Um, 
So to test this hypothesis more directly, um, one of the experiments, um, we, we performed a um, simple experiment, experiment where we um, forced the recurrent activities to go to zero um, toward the end of the trial in this period. Uh, and we call this manipulation uh, tethering. Tethering increases the temporal complexity of the task because it roughly corresponds to changing the output of the network um, um, to sharply drop to zero um, from whatever value it would have taken otherwise during this period. Um, we find that um, tethering leads to an overall increase in the sequentiality of the solutions, although the effect is not um, significant in all tasks. So here's an example um, pair of trials from the tethered and un untethered versions of the 2FC task, um, again with the same initial conditions. As you can see, um, th this manipulation doesn't just change the dynamics during the response period, but over the entire um, tri uh, trial duration. Um, next, uh, to investigate the effect of delay variability, we ran a version of each of our experiments with delay duration variability, uh, and uh, delay durations came from one of these values, random, uh, chosen randomly in each trial. Um, and um, for each of our tasks and each initial condition, we can compare the sequentiality on index of the um, uh, variable delay version of the uh, the fixed delay uh, version of the exper of uh, uh, the experiment with the variable delay version of the experiment and plot it in this graph here. So here's an example from the um, gated delay estimation task, and uh, these are example um, trials from the um, uh, from this condition. So the si uh, the fixed uh, delay version on the left and the variable delay version on the right, and um, we can do the same thing for all tasks and all initial conditions. Um, when we do that, we get a, um, a plot like this. So as you can see, most of the um, dots are below the diagonal, which means that um, the delay duration uh, variability reduces the sequentiality of the solutions. Um, uh, and uh, this is because in sequential solutions, the representations change during the trial uh, duration, so they can't be decoded using the, the same fixed decoder, but the, um, the variable delay uh, duration experiments um, re uh, require that, uh, and so force the network uh, um, to learn a more stable representation across, um, across time. Um, and f um, finally, many recent um, rodent uh, experiment experiments um, uh, use uh, navigation type experiments with the help of um, virtual reality setups. And uh, it has been suggested by many people that um, navigation or motion related inputs the animal receives during such experiments might be crucial for the generation of these sequential activity patterns. And uh, to test this idea, we uh, designed simple navigation uh, linear track version of our experiments. So in these experiments, the network is um, assumed to be um, navigating through a linear track um, at constant speed and um, it receives noisy information about its hypothetical location in this linear track, in addition to the task relevant inputs um, it receives. Um, note that the location information is completely irrelevant uh, to the task, so the network should just ignore this information. Um, and then we can just do the same thing that we did for, for, um, for the other cases and compare the sequentiality of the solutions um, to the sequentiality of, uh, sequentiality of the solutions with this uh, dynamic input um, to um, the versions of the same experiments without the um, dynamic input. Um, and when we do that, we get a plot like this. Um, so, and these are uh, example uh, trials again from one of the conditions here. Um, and so we see that most of the dots are above the diagonal, uh, which means that um, dynamic uh, irrelevant input increases, the motion related input increases the sequentiality of the solutions. Um, and we think that this is because motion related dynamic input um, already contains a sequential structure, which it um, conveys to the recurrent neural network, and the network doesn't completely suppress that information even though um, it's irrelevant to the task. Okay, so in conclusion, we identified a um, complex array of factors that affect the sequentiality of the emergent solutions. Um, stronger initial network coupling, temporal complexity of the task, and motion-related dynamic inputs all increase the sequentiality, whereas um, weak initial network coupling and delay duration variability reduce the sequentiality. Um, and uh, finally, and most importantly, I think, um, so we believe that the large scale training of neural networks like these um, provides neuroscientists with an unprecedented opportunity to quickly formulate and test hypotheses and um, probe mechanisms in silico at negligible cost, uh, something we can, I think, rarely do uh, with real neural circuits. Um, yeah, I, I didn't have time to um, 
talk about this, but just to give an example of this last point, having complete access to these networks um, actually allowed us to develop a fairly detailed understanding of the, the circuit mechanism that gives rise to um, uh, sequences. Uh, so in particular, we found that uh, training in recurrent neural networks um, installs a particular type of asymmetry in the recurrent weights that has the effect of um, uh, pushing these sequences forward. Um, and with that, um, thank you. So if, oh, there's one question. Uh, yeah. My question is about the factor, the temporal complexity of the target function. Uh, I, I don't know, but that seems like a feasible explanation for the sequentiality because there's a lot of tasks and rodents that have been really similar in terms of the structure of the task and the structure of the stimuli that have been really different in how sequential their responses were. Like, for example, the um, uh, more closely targeted, the more recent papers, the accumulation of evidence, sequentially arriving evidence really of sequential like you showed, whereas the um, uh, in Tim Hanks' paper in a similar auditory accumulation task and also the work that we've done with visual auditory, it's very, very sustained. And the two tasks are really similar in terms of the structure of the evidence and the structure of the task, but the neural responses are super different in their sequential um, I don't know the details of uh, the studies that you mentioned, um, but um, it's possible that there might be other differences that could explain the, the observed differences. And also, um, um, so, um, it, 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 like for example, the mod modality might be different. I guess the uh, PPC is is a more visual area, so I, I, 